Welcome everyone. Welcome to the Kiosk Value Working Group meeting for September 23rd. Uh, please add yourself in the minutes. Agenda is, we have three things on the agenda. First is researcher reputation metric model that we discussed last time. What is, is this? Uh, this is a new metric model. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So, like, if this is good, then we can move it to the template and uh, propose it to the metric model working group. So, we're proposing that academic open source project impact is itself a metric model? Uh, we are proposing researcher reputation metric model. So uh, what metrics will help to assess the reputation of a researcher that will help him in his academic career, maybe. So the metric model is research reputation. Yes. And then. This one. What. Why, what is the link to academic value here? Is that, oh, that's the first metric in the model. So that we is, need to think yes. about other metrics that could constitute this model. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. So there below is the list of metrics that uh, we thought maybe some can, uh, somehow will help to assess the researcher reputation. Gotcha. Like organizational project skill demand, job opportunities, Gotcha. Okay. So, I mean, do we have, are there other potential metrics that would help inform this? I, mean, I, think, I think that would be one of the challenges that we face is finding the boundaries of what informs this and what doesn't. Okay. Because like, if you look at the academic open source project impact, it can it itself contains a number of metrics like lines of code stars you know whatever downloads those kind of things so it contains all that kind of stuff already yep so like how do we do you have thoughts on how we would manage um like building a metric model that Hey, Johan, that hey, John. how would we manage building a metric model that contains a metric that itself is kind of defined through other metrics? <laughs> like we're getting, like it's getting kind of meta here. Yeah. If that makes sense. Vinod, do you have thoughts on this? So thinking on this then, should we keep as academic open source project in fact, as a model. Uh... Yeah, I mean, that's that's one possibility that I thought that like the model itself is actually this metric. Mm -hmm. um, so if we. So how this discuss what I recall, how this discussion evolved when we are working on this academic open source project impact like that was focused on the project that academics are developing and its impact. Right. But the reputation is a holistic picture of that uh, researcher rather than the impact of a particular project they have developed. They can develop multiple projects. They can do other things which carry some impact for them in the, uh, on a bigger picture. Right. I think it, I think like software citation is listed there. Yes. It could be another one. I mean, we have one, to keep it kind of open source based, I think. Yes. One was we were thinking of putting a fair metric and add it to this uh, reputation. Like... Right. Developing the fair metric is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. So I'm. 
you know, the, the, the metrics models too, I mean, it's quite possible for them to contain metrics from other working groups. So yeah. Johan, one of the things we're doing here is, so obviously you know that the working groups develop metrics that are kind of unique to that metric group or to that working group. And one of the things that's been coming out of chaos is how do we start assembling the metrics in meaningful ways that could help people in given contexts or given scenarios? Because right now the list of metrics is maybe 60 metrics, but it doesn't really provide guidance as to how you might bring 10 of those metrics together in a particular context to provide meaning, right? And so we do this in practice, say, for example, with the, our DEI badging program. So if an event is trying to earn a diversity, equity, and inclusion badge, here are five metrics that you need to think about when earning the badge. Um, so that's, that's kind of when we talk about metrics models, that's what we're talking about here is what would be a set of some number, you know, three to seven, Toy made that up, but three to seven metrics that could be drawn together that would provide meaning for somebody. And then what we're going to do is on the website, when people go to the metrics page, they can filter actually by model. So they can find context that might be meaningful to them and kind of see a collection of metrics that's a little bit more, a little bit more focused than just 60, so giving somebody 60 metrics and saying, here, <laughs> figure it out yourself. So, so for the metric model that we're looking at, it's called researcher reputation. And so one of the things that we've been talking about in the value working group is how we think about open source software as connected to, to, to researcher productivity. So this is a big thing, particularly like with organizations like the Sloan Foundation, RIT, Rochester Institute of Technology is doing this kind of work. Johns Hopkins is doing this type of work where they're starting to see open source software as a, an artifact that should be considered in tenure and promotion cases. So that we don't just look at grants and papers, kind of the usual things that we look at. Um, so there's this work is kind of coalescing around this. So we're thinking about a metrics model that would be just that researcher reputation as probably we need to be a little clearer, but as derived from the software that they produce. Because um, you're probably quite familiar with very strong software developers who do amazing work in the academic space and contributes very strongly in, the, in that academic space, um, but they get, you know how it is, at least, at least it is in the US, researchers get basically no credit for software work, none. No, so is it the no, same no. where you are? So I, I mean, it's, it's, it's about citations. It's, yeah, it's uh, all, it's all and, about citations. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Would it be and, software, uh, would software citations count? No. No. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, the, the software engineer field is maturing in terms of the uh, artifact badging uh, on okay. papers. So the, um, a lot of conferences are starting to move towards uh, art, artifact checking. So the researchers are encouraged to submit their artifacts and then the, the reviewers can go through to validate it. And then there are different steps, different badges uh, up, to, uh, up until like everything is fully validated and okay. available and uh, this along with the open science principles uh, that's also grown within the software engineering field i think we're moving towards that open source will be a, a model for how you can uh, how you can share these artifacts these research artifacts uh, and also to to uh, enable re replicability and verifiability mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully also collaborate on. So I, I just transitioned to uh, research, this research institute of Sweden. So yeah, a research, yeah, National Research Institute. And what I'm trying to do there right now is to uh, establish some kind of internal open source uh, function that, that can uh, try to push this way of translating and sharing the, the research uh, as open source as a way of collaborating on that, okay. that's another story but so yeah I, to, to, to your point i think i think open source will become more important as we say at least from my perspective as this artifact uh, validation trend mm -hmm. and open science is becoming more and more uh, 
adopted. I don't know about the IS field. I can only I can, I can only talk from software engineering perspective. Yep. No, oh, that's fair. Um, okay. So it's it actually sounds like we're maybe in slightly different spaces, but kind of heading down the same path. Yeah. At least in the U.S. and and in Europe, just. Like, what do we do with these artifacts? Like, how do we, how do we, what do, it seems silly to just dismiss them. And so we need to start accounting for them a little bit more deliberately. Okay, cool. Even I can think of a, a step which GitHub has taken is allowing you to have a citation for your software that you have developed and placed it on the GitHub. So people can cite that as a, an artifact that needs that that they have used or something so if we were to take a look at the metrics that we have available to us in this space we have i'll share my screen so here in the this is on the value tab we have this one that we're considering as part of the researcher reputation, but this is the only one at this point. So the, the question would be like, are there say metrics in here that would also, like if we measured, say Sean submitted a piece of software, um, like are there things that within an OSPO, within an open source program office, within a university that we would potentially care about when trying to, to understand researcher reputation. Like to me, change requests, like no, nobody cares about that. Like the number of pull requests you have accepted, <laughs> no, nobody yeah. would care about that. Yeah. Um, like issue life cycles, nobody cares about that would be my guess. Um, lines of code changed, nobody would care about that. Am I, I'm, I'm speaking like as an academic, I'm trying to think of the research tenure and promotion process. Like if I said I had 10,000 lines of code changed in my software, people would be like, yeah, I really don't care. <laughs> uh, um, would anybody, is, so maybe, I mean, new contributors? Yes, I can think of it as like you developed a software and how many other people are contributing to your work as a collaborators, maybe? So do you think that, I mean, to me, in this case, new contributors would be a signal of community growth or community development? You know, so like if Sean has Augur software, or Johan has a piece of software, right? And it's just him contributing to the software software right and just kind of merging his own prs and growing it that way building that community base with that i would say ad adoption because how, how is it used i because contribution because the you you can't say anything about having a peer reviewed or the quality of the contribution process but you can't say something about how adopted okay uh, that the scientific software is Okay. If there's a high adoption, it true. It probably has. It, it can imply something about how pretty, pretty good how, impact. How, yeah. yeah. How what kind of impact it has, kind of like, like a citation. So I I would think more from the perspective of adoption. Okay, I think that's and, um, and then just 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 to add, uh, wouldn't it be because there is, I know some service that can add a DOI identifier to open source projects. I don't know. I don't what remember it? that service. What but is I, if a DOI? Oh, uh, uh, yeah. The the unique ident identifier. Yeah, there is. Uh, there is um, the the Journal of Open Source Software, mm -hmm. which assigns. So basically, you submit. I think they actually give you a DOI number, and mm -hmm. you submit it, and they review. It's they review the software as. Things like having a, a, a well-structured README, like a, a fair test suite associated with the software, you know, kind of the okay. software things. Mm -hmm. And the Journal of Open Source Software, I believe, does give you a DOI that can be cited. Mm -hmm. And then James Howison. They do. I'm absolutely certain they do. Uh, 
okay. Um, because that would because, be. I mean, yeah. Go if ahead. you could, if you could uh, go that step forward and see which papers do claims on contributions to yeah. this uh, software artifact to this this project, and then you could do the step further in okay, but what's the citation on what's the impact on those papers? Yep. And then go back backwards, but that's probably the new new metrics than what's available at the moment. Yeah, I think yeah, we don't have those developed. I think that would have to yeah. be a new metric set. Yeah. Okay. But I but so, I think it's a, I think it's a good point. I like Johan's point that like new contributors may not be a great window into okay. impact that or reputation. Um but something like having having a look at the downstream citations or some sort of downstream dependency you know, how, would be good. How about downloads and clones of the same uh, software that a researcher has developed? Will that be considered as an impact or a... Well, thing? we have, it's here, right? Yes. So it's already here. Yes. And we do have a number of contributors. Yep. So I, my my take is is we don't have enough metrics wise to start building this out yet. Okay. And my I thought is we well we have a base but we don't have a comprehensive list and so the question is do we need to do we need that comprehensive list to begin? Like can a model be a model in progress? Would be my question. It could, but like what right now we have one metric in this model. Uh, that's yeah, we don't have enough metrics developed. Yeah, one's not enough. That's not a model, yep. that's a metric. <laughs> a metric wrapped around wrapped into yeah, the model. I mean it's uh <laughs> so how about the list below which we have in this like uh the list existing metrics? Uh, can these help us to answer that question of that uh, researcher reputation metric model. Project velocity is one. That's that's an interesting one. You know. Yep. Can you put the link in the chat here, Vinod, for velocity? Yes. Yes. Let me find. Just to add, I'm on the move, so I won't okay. be able to uh, to see anything. Uh, I'll, oh. I'll be on mute and, and participate. Are you outside in Sweden right now? Walking the corridor down to the lunchroom, getting my lunch pocket, and then heading back for dinner. All right. Back home. I was gonna say, I, I wouldn't mind views of Sweden. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sun the sun actually came out now. It's been raining the whole day. <laughs> A link to the project velocity. Okay. All right, Brian. Okay. This might be a to me. This is a reasonable. And again, interestingly, right? This, like, includes number of committers. I guess that's. Oh, do we have number of committers in here? I think it was uh, implementation. If you go to the implementation uh, a little up, yep, uh, number of committers up, uh, not in this. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if there what overlap there is between these two. Yeah, because this is these are both kind of composite metrics, you know. Yep. I need to get rid of that. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, this is just, it's, I'm having a hard time sorting this out in my head that we have these metrics models 
that are comprised of these composite metrics. And these composite I can metrics. Add for, yeah, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just to add a, to context, I'm uh, maybe Novo de Bricht. It's a startup from Malmo in uh, Sweden. They were on the Chaos podcast with uh, Georg okay. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they're they quite new. They, they do, uh, what do you call it, component analysis static component analysis, yep. uh, security, and uh, they've also added license, but now just recently also uh, a health check where they take different metrics uh, with inspiration from chaos, including um, like 30 or 40 something. And then they compile it into what they call features and then into two or three different flags. So so the companies basically can, can scan their whole code base Yep. and get a get a, a number uh, a, a, a composite metric or me meta metric if they should look more into that that um, project but maybe their their way of composing these meta metrics may be interesting to to look into in, in this context what's the name of the organization johan the bricked okay D.E. Bricked. Okay. They were on the Chaos podcast with Georg. Uh, okay, a couple of chief ago. data scientist is Emil Moreus. Okay. M Emil. Cool, thank you. Um, yeah, we could, we, maybe we should take a look at that. So I'm just wondering. I feel this metric is very old and I, I guess this needs revision or some fixes. If I look at this. Which one? Uh, project velocity, if I'm looking at it. Okay. I'm just taking some notes. Software citation. What is it? Software, not software citation. Academic open source project impact. Okay. Hmm. All right. My goodness, I'm having a hard time typing today. Oh my gosh. I need to just slow down. I mean, maybe just talking through this, these are kind of three that I see as potentials. What do you think, Vinod? I'm also thinking of one more, which is in the development process right now. So maybe uh, we can add it soon. Once it's what is done, it? Which, which is fair metric. Yeah. It's not yet developed, but we are like, uh, focused on it. OK. I think we might need to get some folks from the fair metrics program to join and help us develop those. So there is a one session today that I'm attending, which is one hour session on the fair metric discussion. Okay. Yep. I think we need, there's been an interesting discussion that's been occurring on the chaos board list, which is as we connect with other organizations like, like fair, the fair for RS, the fair for research yeah. software, yep. these metrics to, if we're going to help um, them kind of identify what those metrics are, I think we need some support from them as well <laughs> to actually help put those metrics onto paper. Right. Yeah. I think that's a really, it's a really good point. We can't just be a service organization. No, and I'm, I'm working on 
like there's a, actually a pretty it's a pretty complex map of interests okay. between chaos and what fair is trying to accomplish and I've, I've spent a lot of time reading through their documents and their positions and i think i think there are some there's a sort of impedance mismatch with our goals that i'm working to explain but rather slowly okay um hopefully i can do that soon could you also in that discussion i mean talk about drawing people from the fair for yeah. our space into the chaos discussion too yeah absolutely absolutely that, i thought that was a good point on that board mailing list like we need to find we can provide support but like it's the door has to swing both ways kind of thing so yeah so this is the one i'm attending I'm going to attend it today okay what meeting is that with uh, it's a uh, uh, working uh, like uh, research data alliance and they are working on the fair policy and they have some meeting today i was just trying to go there and get the idea of what is happening in the domain as we were developing this metric that's the people okay. yeah those are the those are the people okay so they have the event today around like noon or some time that is in my calendar Okay, I'm going to suggest that we kind of put this on hold for just a second until we kind of organize okay. this a little bit more. Just to add, I, uh, I brought the link to the, I think it was the XC conference and the different badge badges that there are for different quality. That. Gotcha. Yeah. So those might be uh, oh. some kind of uh, sh how, show the, the quantum research quality of the something. Is this about the, okay, interesting. Now I'm talking about open source software as an artifact. Uh, I've never seen this. John, have you the seen research it? process. Um, that ACM badges artifacts? I have heard of it, but I haven't worked with it. So um, hmm. this is coming out of the XC community. Yeah. Um, is this for uh, open source software or any software that a uh, researcher submits? I don't know. No open, I'm just doing a search on open source. It doesn't say one way or the other. Yeah. It's interesting. I had not seen so, I mean, it. it it's, it's, not, it's, it's not exclusive open source product. It's for artifacts. I mean, you, you can make artifacts, research artifacts available in a different way. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's a way of looking at the quality of a scientific research uh, scientific open source project. If they have this badge attached to it, then there is it has been peer reviewed and gone through the the peer review process related to a research conference. Uh, mm. Who does the badging, Johan? Do you know? Is it part of the paper review process? Yeah. So so right now I think it's optional. That researchers are uh, so at at I'm so I'm part of the piece list this year. Yeah, and, and uh, researchers are encouraged to share their data. Uh, if not, uh, they should provide re reasons why rationale. But okay, we don't we don't smash down on it that much. But they they are encouraged to submit their artifacts, and then the artifacts were then peer reviewed or gone through, and then depending on the quality or the level of it, they are assigned a batch. So then it's so the it's, it's the reviewer like myself that would review the paper yeah. and the artifact. Yeah, or 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 they or they have a separate artifact to review in some cases. I see. It, I, see. I mean it, it's a it's a sign of, of the quality. Yeah, yeah. It's one thing about stating something in, in, in the paper, but it's another in actually 
contributing so, uh, or making the software available for, for replicability as well. Okay. That's really interesting. Uh, the question, how is this different from uh, journal, uh, journal of Open Source Software, which is which does the same thing. They evaluate the software and they assign a number here. They are assigning the badge and, and soft, uh, software journal, uh, open source software journal is assigning a DOI number to that, I guess. I don't know. So this is a badge that gets added to the, to the, to the paper. So those reading the paper can see that the, the, the artifact that is uh, used to uh, create the results or whatever, it's, it has gone through this weekly process and had to have this level of quality so you can trust the verifiability and so on. Okay. Cool. Thanks for bringing that up. I had not seen that. Yeah. Cool. All right. Okay. So then if we are putting this on the hold, then should we move to the metric? Sure. Which metrics? Then the next metric in the list is pair metric. So it's this whole list here? Uh, no, yes. So initially we thought we developed four separate metrics. Then the discussion was let's combine them and keep just one metric that is pair metric. So first, then the question is, should we keep them separate or should we keep them together as a one metric? Um, I think it's, it's possible for, uh, I don't know. It's possible for a piece of software to not hit all four of these. Right. Um, but if we just have a fair metric, I mean, so we, we've done this before where there's an organization that has done work, say like, in fact, like project velocity, right? So that right. came out of the, I think the Kubernetes community and we just basically documented the work that they were doing. And so the fair metrics are the same. This is not necessarily our work. We're just documenting it as a as a citable or findable kind of description of what fair is. Right. Um, so are there, like Sean, you're involved in these conversations too. Um, I mean, is there value in documenting a fair metric for, for us, for the fair community? Um, I think there is, but I think what that metric might be is, is not going to be a, uh, trivial to sort out. Why? Because I think what they want from metrics is not how we think of metrics. So I think there's an education process that needs to take place before we can just go and like define yeah. find like the we can, component of like fair. we can we can like do what we've done for other scientists um, and build them instances that show them examples or show the metrics that are relevant. But I think getting that then mapped to what their concerns are mm -hmm. is is a it's an education process they're they're starting from a very rudimentary and i think overly influenced by some rudimentary work in the in the um, mounting software repositories community mm -hmm. that 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 they see as sort of canon but it is generations behind the kinds of canonical metrics that we've defined and the ways that we are using them to understand open source project health like 
everything for the most part at MSR is commits. Like okay. they don't, they don't go a whole lot past that. Okay. And, and I think that's really the most significant issue. So are each of these from that, are each of these like findable, accessible, interoperable and reproducible? Are they all kind of built around commit structure? Yeah. In some form or fashion? The commit structure and also the cataloging, like the work that Michelle Barker does. I um, mm -hmm. can't remember the name of her organization, but Risa. Risa, yeah. So Risa does some cataloging. They rely a great deal on the CRAN, our community, because uh -huh. a lot of this, this, this open source software is actually written in R. And, okay. and so th there's, I think it's more like the open source scientific software problem but from the perspective of computer scientists. Okay. So it's that's the intersection of language and frame that is is different. Not bad or worse, but it's different and is just going to require stuff from us. Okay, because I mean, I could see if we were defining, chaos was defining a metric of findable. Like, yeah. I could see it would go way beyond commits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would, it would, and I think, I think, I think theirs would too. But what findable means in different scientific contexts, I don't think they've resolved that. Different kinds of science handle I open see. source software differently. Like we've faced that issue uh, often. Okay, I, I think they are not focused on that diversity of practice yet because they're they're focused on trying to define. Fair, what fair means as a very high level. Okay. So it sounds like then we should probably wait on those because it wouldn't be worth our effort to try to work these out if it's I, I think I think yeah, I think we can try. I think it's a it's a good activity that I can participate in as I develop my translation. But should it like, should it? We should put it on the table for the moment as an activity for this group. We should. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think it's a practical matter. So, is there of the findable, accessible, interoperable, reproducible? Is there one that you think, if we kept them as four metrics, that would be one that we should think about first? That findable. What are the four again? Findable, accessible, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible. I, findable and accessible. Accessible is easy. Um, so that's the lowest hanging fruit. Okay. Interoperable is, of course, uh, uh, that's a bag of worms, right? Yes. <laughs> Um, and, and that's that's probably interoperable is the place where scientific communities and even, so each scientific community is going to differ in what they think that is. And, and within scientific communities, you'll have a mix of proprietary and open source software that exchanges data in different formats. And the proprietary vendors like to keep their formats kind of below the chest. So, or is that right below the to the chest i think it's it, yes, it, yes yeah so it it makes it harder um it's a harder problem and so would it be it. helpful then to to your point then to move forward with something like accessible here would there be value in doing that and help you in that discussion yeah with, yeah uh, i think i think if we wanted to i think maybe at our next meeting we could focus on accessible okay and and that would give me time to finish the things i've started Okay, well, it might, would that, I mean, if we could kind of work it out even just a little bit, give you some, uh, like an artifact to bring to that discussion that's like, here's yeah. how we think about accessible, right? It's more yeah. than just something about commits. Exactly. It's a variety of things, okay. So um, should I assign as an action item for Sean? Uh, uh, why don't we just assign it as a thing we could start working on collaboratively next time? That, that's fine. I've as a start with accessible metric initially. Yeah. 
but i was also thinking of finding to like uh, different ways of finding we can point out or maybe highlight uh, just uh, for just as thinking of okay i need a particular piece of software what are the places that i'll go to find them is it searchable is it, is it available i mean we've had that so we do this with documentation right yes. so we have documentation discoverability documentation accessibility right. we have we have some of these things just yes. from a, not from a software perspective but from a document perspective so we could probably you know take a look at those so if i was to come yeah. back here well, maybe not value but if i was to come into di yeah Um, it would be probably under here. So here is documentation accessibility. Okay. So it's uh, going to be a little bit different probably, yes. but nonetheless, okay. we should probably like, yeah, try to think about what we've said with respect to documentation accessibility. And I swear we had, well, here it is discoverability. That's a good idea. Maybe we can keep those two as a reference point for us. Yeah, we could certainly use those. As a reference point. Okay. Yeah. I'm just taking this down for next week. Yep. Um, what was the other one? Accessibility and interoperability. Discoverability. Discoverability. Yep. Yes. Which I feel is more relevant to the findable. Yeah, and it might be, right? Yes. Yeah, certainly. In yeah. theory, that <laughs> should be like that. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Rather than documentation, it'll be just a piece of artifact that a, a Catholic uh, oh, community is developing. More tied to um, findability. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's good. When is our next meeting? September, October 7th. Yep. All right, well, we didn't finish anything today, but. Yes. But we had a plan for next meeting. Yeah, no, that's good. I think we got through a couple of things. So, so maybe just, I mean, we only have a few minutes here, but just to recap, we may need to think about researcher reputation as a metrics model. Um, but this almost seems like this needs to wait just a little right. bit until we start addressing some larger set of metrics that could help inform that right so maybe the maybe after this only oh my goodness what? only after we develop some of the fair metrics and maybe things like citations or dependencies. Yes, software citations. We have the downstream dependencies metric. Okay. Oh, well, let's, can you put that in here? Yes, uh, that is in the risk making group. So maybe not dependencies, we could take a look at, 
I don't know, badging, something like that. Okay, that's good. All right, well, we have a plan. Yep. So a meeting to make a plan. Yes. Planning the plan. <laughs> I have to the link of it. Johan, you're on a bus now, it appears. Oh, Sweden. Wow. There is Sweden. <laughs> Looks cloudy. Oh, it's, it's not raining. Yeah, cloudy. Sun, semi sun skies. Not bad. Not Five bad minutes at all. from uh, Malmo. Not bad. At all. When I was a child, I was always told Sweden is a heaven on earth. So I still have that image. I've never been to Sweden, but I have that. Oh, it's a heaven on earth. Is that true, Johan? Heaven on earth? Sweden? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> compared, compared, compared to a lot of other places. Right on. All right, cool. Um, I think we're good. Yeah, we are at the end of our meeting time to maybe a minute early okay i'm gonna stop my share here thank you Vinod. thank you it's good to see you johan yes good to see you sean you good to see everybody you all have a good time drive safe johan the worries me to see you in the car but oh he's, guess the no, bus. he's on a bus, a bus. He's, a bus. He's on that's the bus. right they have public transportation <laughs> in europe i forget about these things <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Hey, everybody folks. take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.